it's like a relief because you just never think that you could get a job done because this is gnarly country. So cool. I'm Nicole Carlisle. I've been hunting with my dad since I was young. I got to love hunting because it offers a challenge. I love being outdoors, I always have. Not a lot of girls hunt. Most of the films you watch, most of the people you talk to are all men. And so I like that idea of getting into hunting. Living in Idaho, it offers such beautiful scenery and just opportunity to be out in the wilderness and to be able to possibly fill the freezer with some meat is always a plus. Uh, this year I had an opportunity put in for a mountain goat tag. My boyfriend Jordan was like, is this something you want to do? And I was like, sure, why not? Like, might as well try it out. A day before my 24th birthday, I found out I drew the mountain goat tag. Didn't really know what I was getting myself into until we started preparing for the hunt, backpacking into the unit to scout and watch these goats in their habitat, the rugged country they're in, learning their patterns, their habits. Stingishing between nannies and billies, we came to find out was extremely difficult especially in the field. You're looking at a goat a thousand yards away, 500 yards away uh, through a spotting scope. And we just really practiced like, what makes this goat a billy? What makes this goat a nanny? So we really took the time to study each goat this summer, be at home at night just Googling pictures and turn the phone to each other and be like, is this a nanny or a billy? And just really trying to prepare ourselves um, to fill the tag with a mature billy goat. So I called my brother up, um, broke the news that I drew a Idaho mountain goat tag, and I knew going forward with this hunt, I, it would be super cool to get it on film. And he, that's what he does. He films for top priority hunting, and I wanted him there as my brother, number one, but number two, to have a once in a lifetime tag documented would be something so cool to me forever. Our schedules really haven't aligned to hunt together, so I was super pumped when he said he'd be able to make it. You start thinking about expectations for a hunt, and I know it's gonna be steep. I know it's rugged country. We've scouted it. It's, it's not gonna be easy. I hope to kill a mature billy, but just the experience of this hunt is, is gonna make memories for a lifetime. So Jordan, Ben, and I left our house around 4 a.m. Friday morning. Where are we heading? Go kill a goat. Got to the trailhead, hiked in four miles to where we were gonna set up camp. Seen some goats right above camp. Um, hiked over into another basin. Saw some goats that were pretty far away. Um, Justin wasn't able to make it up until Saturday, so we had a whole day to hunt and find the goat that we wanted to kill. We had an idea of what goats were in here Friday night. Saturday morning, we went right above camp to watch the goats above us again, and it looked like a decent billy we'd watched all day Friday. The ridge line's pretty rugged, about 10,000 feet. It was some gnarly stuff. Definitely nothing I've ever done before. Definitely took me out of my comfort zone. So we pop over the ridge and, and there's goats like 200 yards from us. And so we get the gun ready, we're, we're quiet, and it's the billy we had been watching, a big body. Um, not sure on the horn size how big the goat was, but it looked decent. And by that time, by the time we got over to them, it was about 7, 7.30. And I had my crosshairs on the nice billy and had, had plenty of opportunities to shoot. But I just did not feel comfortable with 
the amount of light we had left or where the goat could have landed. It was rugged on the other side. So I decided not to take the shot and the whole way hiking back to camp, I just kept thinking, man, I hope I don't regret this. I hope I don't regret not taking the shot, but something in me told me not to take the shot. I do have a lash brush. Yeah, no pictures in the cold unless she gets to do her lashes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe brush my lashes. So we met Justin back at camp and kind of talked about how our day went, told him what goats were in here, how we felt that those goats weren't spooked enough that we could probably go back up there and hunt that billy again the next day. So uh, that was our plan for Sunday morning. We started glassing right above camp where we had been glassing the last couple mornings. We've seen the same goats that were up there bedded down. We only saw two out of the four. And we kind of just all talked about the game plan, what we wanted to do, and we decided to go after the same same goat we did on Saturday. Could go like this, but he'd scare him. We came up to our glassing spot that we've come to the last couple days to watch these three billies. Um, yesterday we decided to make a move on them. Got within 200 yards of the biggest billy we thought. Uh, it's just too dark. I didn't want to kill him and come off the mountain in the dark. So now we're just at the glassing spot again, trying to find him and we see him. So we're gonna hope to do the same thing we did yesterday and hopefully kill the big one. Yesterday we went all the way around over some scary rocks and I don't wanna do that again. So we're gonna try to get up at the lowest point in this saddle. We decided to go the long route. Up and around the mountain, across a couple rocks, just to get to those billies, just like we did yesterday. Hopefully it works out. So we headed up the ridge again, up the gnarly cliff faces and, and rocks. And the billy we're going after is up top. And right up and over this peak is where we were 300 yards from two nannies, a kid, and a young billy. And Jordan, the mountain goat, up here. Seen some goats way up high, probably 11,000 feet, the same goats that we had seen uh, Saturday morning.
escape plan. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching this, close your eyes. We just made it up past this big rocky section that I hated yesterday. <laughs> um, looking into each of these drainages, we're finding more goats. Goats that are untouchable. <laughs> um, but we're still watching these billies over here. They bed down and then get up to eat and bed down again. So hopefully they just stay in that area while we make our way over there. Now we got 300 feet. Um, 10. 1006. 9600 feet. 9600 feet. And made our way around the ridge line, and I think it was we got there about 1 o'clock to um, the shell rock that those goats were hanging out um, the day before. At that elevation, we, you can't see the goats where they were. So that, that became extremely difficult in deciding what we wanted to do um, to find the goats on the same mountain. So we kind of just sat there, took some naps, ate some snacks. About five o'clock, Ben, starts glassing and sees some goats on the other side of the ridge. We felt the best plan was to kind of get on it and get over there um, to the other side of the, the, the end of the ridge. So we keep popping over, making sure we, those goats don't know we're there. Um, and I just kept looking at the terrain thinking, we can't shoot a goat here. Like the, the shell rocks straight down. There's there's no way there's gonna be any goat left. Like, and I kept like stopping Jordan. He was in front of me. I'm like, Jordan, there's cliffs right here. There's cliffs right here. Like we can't shoot a goat here. And finally, my brother just was like, Nicole, we're not gonna let you shoot a goat unless we know it's in a right spot. So we got up to the end of the ridge line to put a stock on these goats and Jordan was out in front of us and I stayed back because I, I, I didn't want to spook them or anything. Um, Jordan popped his head over the, the ridge and could see a billy at 40 yards. And so he just, he knelt down and, and, and looked back at us and, you know, did the, the 40 gesture that there was a billy right below him. Um, so Justin and Ben got set up with the spotting scope and the camera and and I crept up to Jordan real quiet. I poked my head over with Jordan and he's like, there's Billy 200 yards. And so we kind of we creep back down to where the, the goat can't see us, look back at Ben and Justin and we're asking them, is, is that the Billy we've been watching? Is that the nice goat? And they're like, we think, like it looks like a nice goat. So I get, that, I get set up prone, um, kind of creeping towards the end of the rock shelf and get this Billy in my scope. And I'm like, this is a nice goat. I, I want to shoot this goat. Like this one's this one's mine. We look over to uh, Ben and Justin, and they're gesturing that there's goats right below them. And like, 
30 yards, some more billies. And so we're just trying to be super quiet because we don't want to spook those ones out. And I keep asking Jordan, like, I, I'm telling him, I'm on him, I'm on the goat, can I shoot, can I shoot? And he's like, no, just wait, just wait, be patient. 200 yards. So we waited a little bit and this goat keeps turning around and and pawing at the, the ground and at his bed. And I'm like, Jordan, this, this goat's gonna lay down. He's gonna lay down. And so he's like, one second, they gotta get the camera ready. And and not until the goat turns around and is broadside to me, lifts his head up. I'm like, I'm on him good, I, I have a good shot. And then Jordan told me, okay, take it. Down. I didn't know I didn't know what to think. I'm like, holy smokes, I just shot a freaking mountain goat. <laughs> Is he dead? Like did did I get the billy? Like did he stop rolling? I didn't know what to think. I was so rushed with emotions. I was shaking. And then I just look back and they're all smiling like, you just shot your goat. And I just couldn't help but just cry with relief that, that we all got it done. It was so cool. I gave Jordan a big hug. I gave my brother a big hug. It was, the, the moment was so real. I just had a moment of relief because you come up here and you experience these mountains and the terrain and you almost think like, how the heck am I gonna make this happen? Like, can I truly kill a mountain goat and be up here with the mountain goats? It just, it, it's hard not to be doubtful. Like how the heck, you just re replay the scenarios in your head. Like how, how are we gonna do this? This is intense. Oh, I can't believe I just shot a go. <sighs> it just didn't seem real to me that I had, that the goat was down. I almost didn't believe that I, that I killed the goat. Like there's always different scenarios you run through your mind. Well, what if I made a bad shot? What if the goat got back up and ran? I asked Jordan if I could shoot like three different times, but he was gonna bed down. And then he made one last turn and I I shot him. And then he rolled and rolled. Not too far away. Yeah, hopefully he stopped by a little timber pocket. There's goats still hanging around here. That was insane. A once in a lifetime. I can't even believe it actually happened. And the whole way down going to find the goat, um, you're just, I'm just hoping the whole time, please not be broke, please not be broke, please not have tumbled and just ruined the goat. So from what we heard, the goat didn't roll too far. And by the time we saw the goat and he was down is when I was just like blown away. Like the goat's dead right in front of me. Uh, like we did it, I did it. A once in a lifetime tag that, that I will never get the chance to do again in Idaho. Check him out. Oh, he's got 
on that. <laughs> yeah. Billy down. Okay. We just got him moved up. This big old log stopped him from rolling any longer. Um, beautiful goat. He's a little broke, a little tiny broke. About eight and a half on the one side. Beautiful coat. I can't believe it. So cool. Their chest is huge. When you see the ribs, you're just like. Pull it up like this. Uh -huh. Just take that membrane and just barely touch yeah. it. See, once you get it going, you should be able to punch it out with our hands. So we're keep working down towards the tail. So we can do this thing. That should feed us all winter. <laughs> what are we doing, Nicole? 